Hello folks, welcome back to Doc Shows You How. Today we're doing a first for this channel. I'm going to teach you my painting tricks on this guy here. Uh, if you like this kind of thing, you like seeing me build stuff, go ahead and subscribe. I know you hate hearing it from all of us, but it really does help the channel. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get to the table and show you a couple of my tricks. Alright, so if you just watched the first probe droid tutorial, this is the one we made. Um, really happy with this guy. I, I, I'm going to admit that I took a nice, slow, long approach to him and uh, developed him over a couple years worth of just fine-tuning the design. Uh, I saw the visions, right, where they did a Doug flying one in that first kind of samurai episode of Bounty Hunter. No, I'm not trying to recreate it exactly. I'm just trying to make something that looks like it's in the universe here. Um, so the recipe on this body is more or less the same as what you saw before. I have a little mold for this little resin detail I use here, but whatever. Um, but the, the pilot, I know you people are like, how are you going to scratch build the pilot? Well, I didn't. Not entirely. 3D print. Uh, do I get a good shot? There we go. Uh, okay. Um, a friend of mine did me the favor of printing a bunch of these off a while back for me. And in the process, I know there's a, a stage of refinement, so I asked her to save all of the um, mistakes for me as well. And then I took the mistakes as well, and that's how I cobbled this guy together. So, as the old uh, thing used to come across the TV, we joined this program already in progress. Anyway, so here we go. Um, built um, the eyes, just like the previous video, covered in, in a masking fluid base coat black. I'm going to do something different on this video I usually don't do and this is kind of show you the paint process. On the process, uh, there's some things that I like to, to consider along the way. Um, deepest things first, so like the whole the whole alien, the whole Doug in there is going to be the very first thing because he's the hardest thing to reach. I'd like to get him the best I can and we'll work out from there. So let's get... So I'm just going to use inexpensive craft paints. I even got that one on sale. Um, Various colors, a flesh tone, black, a burnt sienna, white, and we're just going to fill up the tray. Now, there's different things you can do for this. I mean, some people make a little palette to kind of make sure they see how, how much is painted off. But, you know, practice. If you really want to get good at painting, I suggest watching more videos here on YouTube. There's lots of great folks that show you wonderful techniques. Um, and we're just going to kind of put all over our alien. So just uh, a little bit more of the flesh, just a little bit more color there. So just more layers up, a little bit brighter, a little bit brighter, you kind of get a nice tone. Just dry brushing, just a little bit of dry brushing. And then so I'm going to, I'll come back to the clothes a little bit later. Um, I'm not sure what color I want to do those. We're going to switch gears to the droid itself and uh, Pretty happy with those rocks, actually. I don't know how much I'm gonna do with those. Anyway, so let's uh, let's get moving on to the silver, I guess. Okay, so we're gonna go with a slightly larger brush, that one that's a little bit bigger. This one I'm gonna be using this silver. Again, not terribly expensive, not specific hobby paints as far as for miniature stuff, so you don't have to spend a bunch of money on those things. And so, just like the other dry brush, I'm gonna just load, load that on the brush. Get that nice and into those bristles. And then we take again, and we're just going to brush most of it off. And then once you've got a good amount of it off, like I like these details in here, but I'd like them to pop a little more. Just to add that. And then, like, just kind of the edge is fine. So it's still black, but. Popping those details a little. Just the edges. Um, this light kind of little, little, little amount is sometimes also referred to as uh, edge highlighting. 
So, learn some of the lingo, I guess, today. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of continue that everywhere. Just let it dance on the details so that they start to pop. And then I'm going to consciously try not to paint this little wire so that it kind of just blends into the background. So that your brain can kind of just edit that out for you as you look at it. All right, and the guns, oh, the guns. Those are simple, it's just a small amount of shrink wrap that you would use on like electrical stuff and then some, some toothpicks, just a very quick. If you'd like to see a tutorial on how I kind of knock out my miniature guns, uh, comment below and I can do a video based, it's just how I knock out armaments that are for builds. And then we're just gonna make that one pop to that. So, the insides of these claws, I kind of envision those as being a work surface, so they may not have any paint. So maybe, maybe we scratch just a little bit in there to make it look like it's used. It's a tool. This isn't a brand new off the assembly line. This Doug modified it. He's using it as a thing to fly around with. Maybe... This one's a bounty hunter. Well, we know the one in the show was, but I don't know about this one. He's just kind of... Maybe he's a desert pirate. And he robs your uh, Jawas. Anyway, so there's, there's the silver layer. And so now we're going to go ahead and uh, bring introduce a little bit of water right here. So I even just used some from the... Uh, the water I clean my brush in. Just grab a little bit of that and we're just going to tint that water, maybe a little more. And then this is kind of in the first kind of grime layer. So I kind of want the, the grime to also be low where it's the closest to the ground. I feel like maybe the upper portions get the dust kind of knocked off of them as it flies. So just kind of the lower section of this arm and the, the hands. And I know that looks really strong right now, but we're just going to let that totally dry on its own. And that's uh, it's going to add some interesting depth of color and character to this. Um, okay, so clearly the rocks got a little bit when I was painting it. So this is just going to help tone the harshness of that black down, just to make it look a little bit more realistic. I like the kind of reddish Mars uh, rock looking on some of these things here. It helps to pull you into a galaxy far, far away. And of course, I'm a Colorado boy here. I I grew up climbing all over the Red Rocks Amphitheater, and it was beautiful then, it's beautiful now. If you've never seen a concert there, get to a concert there. It is something. Anyway. So, let's let that dry. We will come back probably in the morning. Or tomorrow, or the next day, or whenever I can do it again. Alright, so, that wash, see, like, it looked really strong before, but now it just kind of gives that wonderful little, like, dusty feeling on the edges uh, like it's been kind of used and abused and all that will take care of maybe so moving along here on the dug um i think i really want to do a maybe a green or an orange on that jumpsuit now both of those colors um might need an undercoat of some sort uh so what happens with an undercoat is that helps shine through to the next coat and, and helps make it brighter. As an example, if you guys have done a lot of this kind of thing, you know that if you want something red to really look red, you paint the whole area white first. In fact, I think that's the choice. We're gonna paint the pilot in a little red shirt and outfit. So I'm gonna prep the palette for that and be right back. So this uh, is a little bit more of a detailed piece here. I'm using a wet palette and this is going to help me 
water the paints down to a point where they're going to go on to him better. So like I mentioned a moment ago, we're going to go ahead and start with that white now. Just pick up a little water, draw that out. And we're just going to kind of get in there and do the clothing. And now, what happens here is the undercoat, even though you don't really see it at the end, it helps send light back away from the piece, making it brighter. Now you could certainly just put red on there, and if you've got a strong enough pigment red, it'd look fine, I'm sure. Um, but even doing that, this undercoat helps. And that's something that is worth considering with a lot of different colors, yellows, bright oranges, maybe you've gotten a, a bright green, and then you can also assist colors with that undercoat. Um, one of my favorite tricks is using the brightest canary yellow I can um, as a base coat for gold paints. It can elevate a gold paint from just a kind of good paint job to a pretty nice paint job with just that one little trick. Again, that one was me using a canary yellow as the underpaint for the gold. Oh. So, no reason to make you watch all of it. I'm gonna get that base coat done. All right, so, step at a time, we're getting the layers on there. And, um, not the problem. There we go. There's a little bit cleaner shot of it. Uh, so the white you can see there really helps to find that, yeah, there's something going on there. It's not just a blob of black, and he's like in top of that head there. Uh, so we're going to give that just a couple minutes to dry, and then we're going to start on the red. In the meantime, kind of just look at the thing and see, are you happy with just the black and silver? Do you want to maybe give it some other kind of, of detail, maybe a number or a, a clean white stripe somewhere? Anyway, so... There's the white coat. All right, so there we go. Just gonna get a nice thin amount of that red. And we're just gonna kinda start making that pop. And just take your time, get it in there. I know it doesn't look great right now, and you're just gonna do layer after layer, so that's actually enough there. <laughs> There, the pants kind of stuff way in there. It's all about those thin layers at this point. Still not using expensive paints. Still not using specialty hobby paints. These things just end up costing a lot. That's not to say I don't use them. Um, I just use them sparingly. All right, I'm gonna keep going off camera. So, nice bright red. I think that this is where we change techniques again. I'm going to break out some washes to help pop some of those details. So for these, I do have some specialty paints, the hobby paints here, um, uh, Army Painter, Light Tone, and Dark Tone. Just give those a good shake and um, we're just going to put a few little drops in these little bowls here. And just like the wash I made with the acrylics, only this is a finer wash, we're going to go ahead and start with the lighter tone. Discover all of our guy here, all of his skin. And if you get onto some of that uh, clothing, that's perfectly fine. All this does is help the details pop out a little bit. And then we're just going to go ahead and let that, oh, that dry. 
Um, and we're just going to go ahead and move on to the dark. And this I want to use on all that red we just did. And when you see it pool someplace, you can just drag that to someplace that doesn't have any. Just pick it back up with a brush and move to someplace that needs it. Pooling is so good, um, but you don't want to have too much in some place. You don't want to lose what you're painting by it all being kind of muddied out. Right, and then we're going to go ahead and let that also go through an initial dry here, and then we'll come back and examine, you know, how, what else we might need to do. Okay, so now I'm going to go in and pick details on the face and a couple of things and use that darker tone. Like I'm not going to cover the whole thing, just say the eye area inside of the face. Maybe the fingers here. And you know, sure maybe another little bit of a coat on that armor little piece there. Just make it pop a little bit more. So, I mean, it's looking pretty good. I, I think it's a little too plain still, though. Um, so what I think I'm going to do next, I'm going to take this kind of army-ish green color, and I'm going to, just kind of on the head between the eyes and stuff, I'm just going to put a hint of it in there, maybe making it look like a piece of old rebel tech rather than imperial or whatever. Give it just a little bit more pop, a little bit more character. So for this technique, I'm going to take a piece of old kitchen sponge, and now of course I've cleaned all the gunk out of it, and it's not gross, but uh, just cut a little piece, and then with a pair of, of tweezers, just kind of rip off the little edges so that it's not a straight little shape, just kind of make some random things happen there. And then that'll give even more of a kind of naturally kind of thing. And then I'm just going to go ahead and grab that like that looks actually that looks like it's still too big here. So I'm going to cut that down further to uh, have less of a fingerprint on the model here. Yeah, yeah, that's quite a bit nicer. So we're just going to grab that. This dry section right here, just get most put off. And just that might take a couple times going over it to get a nice layer that you like. And then, of course, just like with any other kind of painting, if you go too far, you can always come back, go back in with some more silver, go back in with some more black, and it's a dance until you're happy with that look. All right, I, uh, I'm pretty pleased with how that's looking. Um, I feel like there are plenty of situations in the Star Wars universe where this kind of green is complemented with either yellow, maybe red or white stripes here, but I, uh, I don't know, I think I'm pretty happy. Um, that, that's got some great detail. So we're going to go ahead and, and uh, remove the mask that should be still on these eyes. There's a
So that's that liquid mask I put on earlier. Just gonna work on all those little pieces. All the little eyeballs and rhinestones to help bring it back up to some interesting like Star Wars-y. So we're gonna clean that off, be right back. I'm pretty happy with how that ends up looking. Definitely feels like it's in the Star Wars universe. It's got kind of a fantastic improvised feel as far as, you know, maybe salvage some equipment somewhere, had it modified because you had the money. And then just so you have an idea in scale, if you wanted to use it as some sort of proxy for uh, Star Wars Legion, that's, that's what that looks like. If you run some sort of a homebrew or maybe a one-page rules and you want to Let's see what it's like next to a Warhammer figure. There's your Necron. Maybe modify your up some sort of new monster if you're doing homebrew. Anyway, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. If you enjoyed uh, this paint video and would like to see me do more of this kind of stuff, um, comment below, subscribe, let me know. Um, always trying to grow that channel and help more people out. If there's a trick you learned in this and uh, are going to apply the next time you paint something. Comment below. Let me know. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. Ain't not your formazzi, Wadmo!